Hey yo, what's for lunch? Butter chicken is for lunch. <laughs> butter chicken cake. Actually, that doesn't sound good. That sounds like I possibly <laughs> baked butter chicken into a cake. Yeah. Less delicious. <laughs> Haven't tried it, but I'm assuming. To make this butter chicken cake, I am baking 10 pounds of my pumpkin spice cake. You know what? You wanna know something funny? This is Orhan's favorite flavor of cake, uh -huh. but he was away at home in Turkey, so he didn't get any. It's fun. Wouldn't it be funny if Orhan's favorite food was turkey? <laughs> <laughs> Once both my cakes were leveled, I placed one on top of the other, and then I laid an oval template onto my square cakes and cut out an oval with a serrated knife. If this is gonna be a pot, it would be sort of beveled inward at the bottom. So right now it's upside down and I'm just gonna carve like an A line. Save all of your cake scraps because we're gonna use them to make our chicken pieces later. Now I can remove the top layer of cake from the bottom layer of cake and simple syrup both layers. Did you use like a cardamom simple syrup? No, I didn't. Oh. This pumpkin spice cake is like, Filled with spice. Like it doesn't need another sprinkling of spice. I put a cardamom, but there's no cardamom in the butter chicken. But they put it in the right select. That is true. So, gotcha. Next time, are you ready to continue with yes. the process of butter chicken? Now it's time to fill this cake with Italian meringue buttercream. And how do I forget my megaphone every episode? <laughs> Maybe even you on some level. Don't say it. Oh, I'm wearing a mic. Every episode, every episode. Here we go. Crumb coat and chill. Crumb coat and chill. I gotta stop, I'm not Mr. King. <laughs> I want the perfume voiceover always in How to Kick It. Can we have that? Cocoa water. I think it's a little awkward. I am going to ice this cake one more time with Italian meringue buttercream and chill it. Yo, we still haven't hit 4 million, so let's remind them to subscribe. We still haven't hit 4 million. No. Please subscribe! If I get on my knees, can you see me, Cody? <laughs> Please! It We're so happy. close, it would make us so happy. We have all these prizes just sitting here. We want you to have them. What am I gonna do with four mixers? <laughs> really, to celebrate this milestone that we really wanna hit, that we're going to hit, Right. I'm looking at you. Yeah. We have such great prizes to give away, and we're gonna give them away at a live stream party right here on YouTube as soon as we hit four million. You can enter the giveaway right now. Just click the link below, and here are all the prizes that we have for you. Four Pro Series stand mixers with a scale and a sifter attachment. Sprinkle service for a year for 20 people. An entire Google Home Hub set and we have the cutest Sesame Street prize pack. Thank you so much to Sesame Street for the prize pack and happy anniversary. Thank you to KitchenAid for the gorgeous mixers. Thank you to How to Cake It for the sprinkles. <laughs> Thanks, How to Cake It. Thank oh, you. Welcome. Thank you. Don't forget to enter the giveaway using the link below. We can't wait to give away all this stuff. While my cake is chilling, I'm gonna move on and make some of the gum paste details that I need for this cake. For my handles, I'm using black gum paste, and what I'm going to do is roll it into like a thick cord. Then I'm going to feed a floral wire through that cord. First, I brushed on some clear piping gel, feed it through, roll it out until the handle is nice and smooth, and then what I wanna do is bend that handle. And I still want wire sticking out because that wire is gonna help support the handle inside the cake. Handles, I find that helpful when I'm cooking with a pot. Two handles on a pot. And then we can set these aside to dry. I wanted to make some parsley to put on this cake so it could have like fresh chopped parsley, but instead it's gonna be fresh chopped gum paste. You know yeah. that fresh gum paste? <laughs> to make my parsley, I'm rolling my green gum paste nice and thin. So I had a leaf cutter that is similar to the shape of parsley. As long as it kind of looks like it would be parsley, it'll do. They don't make a parsley cutter. Really? Yeah, I searched and searched and searched. And you didn't make a parsley template? No, that would be painful because it would be so small, right? I'm gonna take it one step further because I wanna texturize these leaves. So I'm using a leaf uh, embosser, it's like two halves that you press together and one looks like the back of a leaf and one looks like the veining in the front of a leaf. I just picked the one I had that looked the most 
Like parsley? They also don't make a parsley texturizer. What? I can't even believe this. You know, they have it for like rose leaves and like lilies, but not parsley. It's just rude. What about those herbs? Gonna let you down. Will they stand their ground again? What about the herbs? Are they gonna stick in your teeth? Right? Once my parsley is dry, I'm just gonna brush on some green colored dust. Just because the gum paste itself is green, but it's kind of like flat. Using a color dust just makes it look a little more realistic. Another gum paste element I need to make is the naan. Mm. So I'm making my naan out of gum paste. It's been dyed like a naan, a shade of naan, right? So you used ivory. Yes, in fact, I did. I feel like we should be able to pun with non. It's non-negotiable that we eat non. Yes, that's excellent. So I'm using just my fingertips to just sort of create those pockets from underneath. And to give this life, I'm going to dry this non on some crumpled up paper towel. And then I'm gonna make a second non the same way. That's right. Put it aside to dry. You know what else is non-negotiable? What? Two pieces of naan. That's right. With it's a minimum food. two. Exactly. Minimum. Is there anything more annoying than when you order any kind of food that goes with bread and they don't give you enough bread? It's like when you get a cheese plate and they give you like all this cheese and a cracker. Yeah. What, what are you doing? <laughs> like three crackers. What are you doing? <laughs> Who raised you? It's time to go back to cake. I'm going, going, back, back to caking. Cake, cake. The true purpose of how to cake it is we're working on our album, right? <laughs> like that's the true purpose. <laughs>so what I'm going to do to cover this cake is roll a band of black fondant and then make sure that the band is also wide enough that I'll get the size lip that I'm looking for. So I could drape this cake. No, I actually couldn't drape this cake, sorry. <laughs> the reason I'm not draping this cake is because like a pot, I need to have like a lip at the top of the pot because really your food would be in the pot, right? Um, I'm glad I could help you out with that. When using a pot, uh, put the food <laughs> in the pot. Yeah, not beside it. Because it's a pot and I rounded those bottom edges, I wanna make sure that it maintains that look. So as I trim away the excess, I'm also gonna sort of tuck that fondant under. I don't want it to just look like, pots don't really look like that. Once the fondant is nice and chilled, what I'm gonna do is mark the top so I'm making sure it's all the same height. So of course I'm gonna use, do I use a ruler? Imagine I'm asking myself that. <laughs> Sometimes I use, like, I have strips of cardboard. You know how to make my own homemade ruler? Yes. Everybody actually keeps requesting that I cake a ruler, but rulers are very thin. Yeah. So I one-upped it and made an actual ruler. You see that? A ruler is so amazing that I can't capture it in a cake. No. No. And I marked the, <laughs> the top just with the tip of my knife all the way around. Now I'm going to start to cut through the fondant. If you're a How to Cake It VIP, you've already seen this episode because you got it two days ago. So if you guys out there like the sound of that, head to howtocakeit.com and sign up to be a VIP. You would have already had this butter chicken. And now, remember that seam at the back of the cake? What do we do to seams on How to Cake It? Hide them. Yes! It's time for me to hide the seam. So I make some fondant paste with a little bit of black fondant, clear food grade alcohol, and then I just sort of ice it over the seam. You're just trying to fill in the seam. So you're not supposed to leave like a layer of paste. You ice it on and then you use a clean spatula to sort of scrape away the excess. Now that my seam is nicely hidden, I want to paint this pot. I kind of want this pot to look like an old, cast iron pot, so I'm just gonna paint the pot. I'm gonna mix some black food coloring with clear food grade alcohol, and then I'm just gonna paint all the way around the pot. Make sure to paint inside the lip as well, because we might see some of that, and that's where all the icing sugar is. So inside the lip, on top of the pot, all around the pot, I like to make sure I'm going in one direction. And then, make sure to paint your handles as well. I need to add my handles to my pot. So I use the piping tip cut out circles of fondant from the cake 
and then I carefully insert the handle. Make sure the wire's going straight. And then if there is any room around the handles where there's cake exposed, we can seam hide. You can roll up some black gum paste and put it in there and then use some fondant paste and a wet brush to just fix those seams. Make sure to touch up the paint as well if you have to seam hide. So just use some more paint, touch it up. Good to go. The pot is ready. You know what it needs? It needs butter chicken in it. And imagine I just made a black pot. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> It'd be fitting because I like to stir a pot. You know what I mean? To make the pieces of chicken, remember the scraps. I told you to save the scraps. It's time to use them now. So what we're going to do is carve little chunks of chicken. It's very freeing. It's very easy. Just use a small serrated knife and start to cut out chicken pieces. You obviously don't want to see any sharp corners. Every piece should be different and have fun doing it. And now you can eat the scraps of the scraps now. That I will approve, you understand? So you'll have some mini scraps from the Scrap carving of scraps. scraps. Yeah, cake scrap scraps. Ooh, scrap scraps. next level. <laughs> it's time to make the sauce, the butter chicken sauce. So I decided on caramel. Girl, you know I'd put you in my butter chicken, right? Caramel, and then I used Pumpkin pie filling. Mm, that's it. <laughs> because I'm the cake. It, like, what did you use? Yeah, because the cake is pumpkin, so it will go, and it's sort of sweet, savory, mm -hmm. and pumpkin and caramel taste good together. And then at the end, I ended up adding just like a drop of red food coloring. When you do this, I took some out in another bowl, added a drop, and then added it back. Because if you take it too far. It'll just be too far <laughs> and you can't get rid of it. So it was literally like in this whole batch, just one drop. Are you gonna finish this dish? I'm gonna finish this dish. Is that non negotiable? Non negotiable. <laughs> so I have all my components laid out to finish this dish. I have some puffed rice cereal. You need to use like the organic type that still looks like rice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so puffed rice cereal. Then I have my sauce, I have my chicken pieces. We're gonna start there. The first thing I do is spoon in on one side of the pot a pile of this puffed rice. The next thing I do is place a bunch of chicken pieces in the pot. Now make sure not to place like a perfectly flat layer. You want it to look sort of piled in one area, less piled in another. Have fun with it, but just place your chicken pieces all in the pot. Why am I doing this? The footage from above is so much better than this. Now we're gonna sort of pour on and spread the sauce. The sauce is thick, so I'm using a measuring cup. I'm gonna pour it on and then just, you know, keep adding if you feel it's necessary. If you do a layer and it looks a little flat, add a few more chicken pieces, pour on a bit more sauce. Back to the naan. <laughs> this naan is looking a bit raw, you know? Yeah. We need to cook it. So for that, I'm going to paint my naan. I used ivory dust. <laughs> oh God. That's right. I have like a color dust that's sort of a cream color and an ivory, I mix them together. And I painted that over my naan. So Mr. Burns is back and I'm going to burn this gum paste. I've burned fondant. I've brulee fondant on the show, but I haven't brulee gum paste. Really? It worked so well. So I, I really focused on the bumps and then the edges, because that's what would be darker. I am so proud of the way this worked. It looks so good. Like Cody kept saying, oh, that looks good, yo. It did. It looked good, yo. You're like a cake chemist, yo. Cake chemist. Hmm. I want to play on that. I want to wear a lab coat, beakers, and I'll just put like buttercream in the beakers. It'd be <laughs> that ridiculous. Really yeah, out. yeah. I need to chop my parsley. I'm really excited about this. I put them on my cutting board. I used a chef's knife and I literally chopped it. And it was so interesting because like you could hear it cracking, right, Cody? So it's like even though I was making all the motions of chopping parsley, it didn't sound the same. <laughs> it was really interesting. Yeah, but it was effective. I'm very happy. It's time to garnish this dish. Garnishes are everything. So, we're gonna start with the naan. We're gonna break the naan very carefully and insert it into the cake. You can just use a knife to sort of cut a sliver down in the cake if you need that assistance. And then just place the naan in, in a non-conformist non, non -conformist way. 
And then the next thing I want to do is, you know when you have butter chicken and sometimes they put like a bit of like yogurt or like a swirl? Yep. So what I did, you're not even going to read this, Orhan would be proud. I actually melted some buttercream in the microwave. Oh, wow. Yeah, just a little. And then I stirred it and I sort of drizzled that over the butter chicken. And then the next thing I did was sprinkle on my chopped parsley and then take a few of the reserved whole leaves and place them. If you need a bit more rice, spoon a bit more on. Just dress, make it look presentable. You're gonna pick this up, not by the handles, and present this butter chicken cake. I wanna make more of your favorite dishes, so leave a comment below what is your favorite food. I'm so happy we've gone international. This week on Step by Step, Veronica has caked up a penguin, so make sure to check it out. And don't forget to check out last week's episode, My Dragon Fruit Cakes which I will forever regret. <laughs>